A blind knight that uses echolocation, viewing the dark, treacherous world through sound. Trapped in a dungeon keep, endangered by combatants, where hazards lurk around every corner. Make sound to have vision, or don't feel stealthy. Avoid impaling threats throughout the dungeon to escape. Engage with Your other prisoners. Not open here now. Could you find the key and unlock myself? Free them to fight back with I more allies. Help. <laughs> Take this guy. The dungeon labyrinth has many paths and even more traps. Struggle through the darkness to find your freedom. An empty plastic bottle would give you 50 cents. A soda can, 60 cents. A used food container, 80. Wondering why I know this? Because that's my job. I am a trash picker at my school. Harry, the trash prince is on a roll today. And how is your trashy affair with Bella coming? She lets you kiss her with that stink? <laughs> Their words don't bother me. They don't know why I do what I do and my secret. I edge close to my class when I hear Bella and her friend talking. You can't be serious, Bella. You want me to break up with him for you? I would do it myself if his poverty didn't give me the creeps. Oh, you are unbelievable! I come face to face with Bella's friend. She knew I heard the conversation and couldn't meet my eyes. She hands me the new phone I bought for Bella and walks away. I saved for months to buy her this phone. I walk down the empty corridor with a heavy heart, pick the phone out of the box, slip my SIM in, and switch it on. When... Harry Parker, you have passed the poverty test? You are now the heir to Parker family's billions worth of assets? If Harry is a billionaire, why does he work as a trash picker? What is his big secret? Why did he not reveal his billionaire status to Bella? To know more, listen to the audio series Destiny Reloaded, only on Pocket FM. Welcome back to Turn 200's coverage of the American Sim Racing League's Sports Card Championship Season Number 4. It's Season Number 1 of 2024, and it's Round Number 3 and 4 tonight, Week Number 2 here. It's the debut of Motorsport Arena Osher Schleben here on the channel. Uh, and as much of a mouthful as that is, what a lovely day for sim racing, as Goodleaf Archives says in the chat. We're very excited to get this one under our belts here and showcase the 14-turn absolute madhouse that we're going to have here tonight for GT3, GT4 multi-class racing action on the channel. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's Tommy Cook hanging out with you. It's Matt Williamson hanging out with you as well. Uh, partner, we've got a good look at this throughout practice, uh, and this is this is going to be interesting, to say the least. <laughs> It certainly is. It's uh, it's an awful tight track, uh, you know, for these cars, especially when we talk about multi-class racing, uh, you know, faster cars trying to get through on slower class cars. Uh, that makes it pretty difficult. Just not many places to make passes. Um, some pretty tricky corners as well. Uh, th we're, we're in for uh, a little bit of a treat here. 
Let's pick up Kevin Minomi here on his second lap. He is in turn number two right now. This is called Hotel. Um, 14 turns in this circuit. I'd say 11 of them are pretty well laid out. Hotel is not one of those turns. Uh, more on that later. Turn number three here. The big rounder. That will set us up here for the triple. A fast triple left sweeping set of turns. And then into the right-hander, which will set you up here for a quick jaunt into Chicane. And they call this turn a McDonald's turn. That's turn number 10. Down the stadium straight we go. To the Shell S. And then to Bauer Curve here. The penultimate corner of the circuit. And if anybody speaks German, I apologize in advance. This is Schaschen Anhalt. That is the final turn there. One of the least generous turns on the circuit as well. Trip down the long straight here. Uh, and that is a lap around uh, Oscherslebit. Uh, holy cow. Uh, yeah, just 2.3 miles in length. 14 turns. Uh confines tight here tonight there are going to be some claustrophobic drivers when we leave virtual germany when it's all said and done yeah certainly are and then uh, the other thing we have we have to talk about that i think may come into play tonight is uh, incident points as well many opportunities to pick up one x's for off tracks as we just saw nate siefker do on his last qualifying effort so uh, that one is not going to count for Nate Seifker. He's going to pull off. But um, I think those off-track 1Xs can pile up pretty quickly here. So uh, got to be careful of that, especially when we get into the feature race when it comes to penalties. Very nice of Nate Seifker to call out his pit entry uh, during qualifying. Um, I think <laughs> muscle memory, memory taking over there a bit. But uh, speaking of Nate Seifker, let's take a look at the point standings here. We got the top five from each class headed into uh, today's event. Yes, sir. Here's the points out of the first week, the first two rounds in the GT3 class. Johnny Alford sits atop the board with 41 points. Uh, Brody Gunter, Mike Pepper, and Nate Siefker are all tied nine points behind Johnny Alford. And uh, Jeff Oaks rounds out the top five there in the GT3 class. That's, uh, that's pretty interesting there. Uh, with all the bonus points and two rounds uh, ended up coming out even uh, for three of those drivers. In the GT4 class, Hunter Engrave, he leads, but only by one point over Johnny Hamby and Rhett Nichols, who are tied for second. And then Jonathan Webb and Rene Garcia sit six points back tied for fourth. Uh, yeah, a couple of notable missing drivers from uh, both of these point standings. Really, in the GT4s, Jordan Probst led a lot of laps last week at Watkins Glen. Did not get good finishes in either event. Uh, and then, uh, similarly, Dave Seats ran up at the front a lot at the end of the feature. Got uh, the win taken away from him by Rhett Nichols, who's tied for second in the points. So, um, some notable absentee drivers that uh, will have some work to do here today. Uh, we got about 15 seconds left to go. Thanks again to Goodleaf Archives for hanging out. And also Monstrosity D&B. Uh, anybody else that's hanging out with us here, let us know. Drop us a chat. Tell us who you're rooting for here. Rounds number three and four. We're going to kick things off with round number three. The first time we're ever at Osher Slibbit. And it's time for Kevin Bonomi uh, to take the poll here. 123-873. Uh, for him, he will lead the field to green with Brody Gunter looking for a bounce back after a rough feature after the dash win last week. Josh Hagee is going to line up in P3 with your current points leader who is outside the bag man, Johnny Alford. Uh, starts in fourth after uh, double podiums last week. Nate Siefker will start in fifth after his feature win last week. Jeff Mathis looking for a bounce back out, out of the Glen starting in sixth. Jeff Oaks then will line up in seventh. Jarrell Williams, I believe, has a pass-through penalty to serve after the conclusion of the first lap here. So he will start in eighth, but we'll have some work to do to get a result. Mike Pepper and Brian Deese then on row number five. It's Matt Schlosser and J.J. Wang on row number six. Uh, Joshua Rutherford starting uh, on the inside of row number seven with Dave Payton, Matt Short, and James Lehman, the rest of that starting lineup. 
going to the GT4s. It is Hunter Engrave with the top time. Uh, Rhett Nichols then will line up to the outside of the front row. Johnny Hamby and Indica Scarlett on row number two. Alex Allen and Renee Garcia on the third row. Kenny Stepp and Nick Batista both are back after missing the Glen last week. They line up side by side. Rick Thompson and Daryl Klotz then on the next row. Nate Morris, Dan Miglin, Fred Thompson, and Corey Rutherford going to be all the way at the back of this starting lineup here. Uh, Matt, uh, a pretty cloudy day in virtual Germany. Uh, what are the track conditions looking like, and what are we looking at here for our first race of the evening? Yeah, pretty uh, pretty favorable track conditions here. 84 degrees on the track temperatures, so uh, going to have to uh, make sure you get the tires warmed up. We already see some scrubbing of the tires throughout the field, so drivers know that they are going to have to get these tires a little bit warmer before they really get after it. Um, excuse me, we have uh, 20 minutes here in the uh, dash race and then 40 minutes in the, uh, well, I guess we'll call it a feature, although they both count for max points. Uh, fuel capacity is going to be 45%, so no, uh, no pit stops in the first race. We will have a pit stop in the second. They get two sets of tires. They do have one fast repair, so uh, I think uh, some of those might be used here today, but we'll have to see. Uh, when it comes to the penalties that we talked about previously, 14X is a drive-through penalty. A 19X is a disqualification. Uh, drivers will have to be careful of that here today. We're expecting about 14 laps here in the first race. Mentioned Jarrell Williams for the pass-through penalty. That is the same penalty for Indica Scarlet as well in the GT4 starting in fourth. Um, so, yes, they both have pass-through penalties to start this race. They have to be served at the completion of the first lap. Um, yeah, so we had a caution last week. According to Brody Gunter, <laughs> it was the first caution in sports car competition for ASRL since uh, the middle of season one. Uh, we're in season four right now, so uh, it's been a while. Cautions are still on. Um, so will we have another one? Uh, I'm going to say it's more likely here than it was last week. So let's <laughs> say buckle up. Yeah, last week was a perfect storm of just happening in the tightest confines on the racetrack there through the S's of Watkins Glen, the big pileup. But uh, you're right, it is very possible here as well, should we have a similar scenario. Rounding turns numbers, uh, forgot how to read and count. They're 11, 12, and 13. Coming to the penultimate corner here. Pace car should pull off this time. Field is ready to go here for the turn 200 debut of Motorsport Arena Asher Schleben. It's Kevin Bonomi and Brody Gunter on the front row. 30 drivers getting ready to get after it here in virtual Germany. SRL Sports Car Championship round number three underway. Barreling it off into turn number one. It's advantage Bonomi here for the outright lead. Gunter contact! Bonomi off and spinning for the second race in a row. Gunter with the lead. Heggie and Alford now in second and third. Side by side battling all throughout. Hunter Engrave currently leading the GT4s. He's got some GT3 traffic trying to make its way through as well. Engrave with the advantage. Yeah, it's Joshua Rutherford trying to get through in the GT3. Dave Payton, James Lehman, Matt, Matt Short. Quite a few of those GT3 drivers trying to work their way through some GT4 traffic at the moment. Dave Payton, the next to go through. Meanwhile, Rhett Nichols here with the National Racing Network car is pulled right up to Hunter Ingrave. Daryl Klotz with a problem. He's picked up a meatball flag here on the opening lap. James Lehman working his way through the GT4 traffic right now. Just got around Indica Scarlet. Scarlet currently sits in third in class right now. Drew Williams off to serve his penalty. Forgot that was where the pit lane was. I thought he was just bailing it off the track. Gunter, after a tumultuous opening lap, is the race leader, Josh Heggie, right behind him. 
Headed into Hotel here for the second time. A lot more single file through the field. Lots of GT3s between the top two GT4s here. Engrave still leading. And Dave Payton just put the bumper to a GT4, Rhett Nichols. And there goes James Lehman around Hunter Engrave. So Lehman now has his own class in front of him to work through. Williams and Scarlett both serve their penalties here and will be cleared to return to the action. Rick Thompson, I think, has towed back to the pits. Shout out to Heath Smith and Don Golden for hanging out with us as well. And I think Indica Scarlet has had a problem somewhere with sitting in third in the GT4 class, now all the well, way down to 12. Had to come in and serve the penalty. Ah, I see. Guns are purple lap there by about two tenths of a second. Pulling away from Josh Heggie. Nate Siefker riding in third. Not a whole lot of challenges here for GT3 positions at the moment. And Hunter Engrave's got a nice gap back to Rhett Nichols as well for the GT4 lead. That's almost two seconds. Now the closest grouping we've got here is third, fourth, and fifth for the GT4s. Hamby, Howland, Garcia, Batista. Oh, Dave Payton just brought it back on the track right in front of Kevin Bonomi. There was some contact there. Bonomi way back here, third to last in class right now after the opening spin there. I guess while we got a second, oh. why don't we take a... Oh, there, well, there goes we don't have Dave. a second. <laughs> <laughs> there, there goes Dave Payton around. Going to slip pretty far back here. Well, we've got Mike Pepper approaching Jeff Oaks now. Oaks with a slowdown penalty to serve, so that will send Pepper up to P6. And now Johnny Alford is closing in on Nate Siefker, and Josh Heggie is closed in on Brody Gunter once again. He has cut that gap down to just a couple car lengths. We'll find a window before this race is over to take a look at the opening lap accident there. Yeah, now might be as good of a time as we're going to get. We're going to go ahead and queue it up. And while you're watching that, I just want to say this was the corner that very famously... Uh, a very Scottish man said that whoever designed that corner should be taken into a dark room and beaten over the head. <laughs> well, uh, Bonomi was on the, the left-hand side through the left-hander and then going into the right-hander thought he was clear, uh, tried to come down in front of Gunter, and it just was not there. So Gunter gets into the right-hand side of Bonomi, spins him right around there into the grass. And Gunter said as much over the radio that he apologized for being there, basically. Close battle for 11th here. This is James Lehman trying to finally make his way through some traffic in his own class as Josh Rutherford a little bit off track there into the grass on the inside of that corner. Lehman's going to get through. Engrave two and a half seconds clear on Rhett Nichols, so nobody under fire right now in the GT3s. No real battles within a second. We got a couple battles in the GT3s now within a second. And to answer know. Don's question in the yep. chat, I didn't actually say it, but uh, it was uh, uh, initial start violations from last week at Watkins Glen. That was why uh, Jarrell Williams and Indica Scarlet had to serve penalties to start this race. And I'm sure the smart folks out there have already figured it out. But if you uh, uh, are wondering why some names are blue, some names are not, uh, anybody that has a blue background, they are in the GT4 class here. Uh, in the black backgrounds, that is the GT3 class. You'll see some of them intermingled as... Uh, some folks have issues or had to serve penalties and whatnot throughout the night. Josh Heggie knocking on the door once again here as they head through Chicane and around McDonald. 
down the stadium stretch. And getting into some traffic here as well, navigating it well so far. That was Rick Thompson. Oh, James Lehman with a problem. Lehman off the track with some pretty heavy damage here, it looks like. Oh, yeah, it looks like he got over into the tire barriers through that chicane part of the track, got off track and into the tire barriers. Yeah, he was, uh, I think he was trying to navigate around Fred Thompson in the uh, chicane section, and they may have gotten together, or maybe not. That's uh, a fast flying section of the track, regardless. Gunter opens the gap back up to about six tenths of a second. Matt Schlosser navigating some traffic here, looking for a way around Jeff Oaks in seventh. Yeah, Schlosser pulled right back up to the back of Oaks, but uh, when they got behind the lap, traffic had to uh, kind of let that battle subside for a minute, but now trying to get right back to it. Hunter Engraves gap over Rhett Nichols is now up to three and a half seconds. Oh, JJ Wang is off track. Loses a couple of positions here, not too many. Gets passed by Matt Short and Joshua Rutherford. Short at the, on the climb after having to start all the way at the tail of this field. Nearly into the top 10. Actually, I think is into the top 10 now. Still the closest two for position. Actually, I take that back. Bonomi and Wang are right here together for 12th. But the next closest two are Gunter and Hege. It's just about 7 tenths of a second between those two. Nate Siefka rounding out your GT3 podium right now. Engrave Nichols and Johnny Hamby right now is in third in the GT4s. But he has faded quite some distance from Rhett Nichols. Kevin Minomi going for a pass. That is the same set of corners. Turns one and two that he got taken out on the first lap. Able to navigate the traffic well and get through on J.J. Wang to 12th. And a reminder for the feature, it is a full invert. GT4s still start behind the GT3s, but regardless, every class gets a full invert. So Bonomi may be in a better position uh, for next race. Right now, Dave Payton would be on the pole with the invert. Jarrell Williams on the outside of the front row after his penalty. Rene Garcia is starting to Reel in Alex Howland. This is for fourth in the GT4 class. And Kevin Bonomi trying to work his way back up through the field has now caught Joshua Rutherford as well. Brody Gunter got hung up in some lap traffic there. The, uh, the gap now for the lead is back down to one car length. But Gunter just as quickly trying to get away once again from Josh Hagee. Past the halfway mark of the dash race here. Oh, Rutherford is around out of turn two. Rick Running Thompson in had to come in to 11. A, yeah, Rick Thompson had to come to a complete stop, was riding behind. And Rhett Nichols just went off the track as well, but only lost time. He's still in second. Garcia has got right up to the bumper of Howland for fourth. In the GT4 class, this is that same battle we were watching just a few minutes ago. Jeff Mathis on defense right now, trying to defend against Mike Pepper. That's for a spot on the top five. You thought passing was difficult last week at Watkins Glen. <laughs> Boy, it is, uh, it is difficult here. 
Yeah, you definitely, when you see the opening, you kind of have to be aggressive here because you might not get another chance. Well, Hagee oh. continuing to put up good laps here. Can't find a way around Gunther, though. Pepper right. and Mathis again right here together. Yeah, right in the middle of the top ten. Starting to work through some traffic now. Getting shuffled a little bit. And Foster's Hengi finally. again. He's on the prowl. He had a look there into the penultimate corner. Didn't make it work. Begging for this front stretch to be about a quarter mile longer. Maybe the draft might come into play here into the first turn. Oh, it looked like Nate Siefker got off track at some point. Siefker has slipped back to yes, six. Yes, he certainly did. Alford now up onto the podium. Eggie hounding Gunter for the lead here with under seven minutes to go. This is Siefker starting to drop back. Schlosser had gotten around to Oaks, now working on Siefker who went off track. And Look at this gaggle. Here, Johnny Alford, Greg, Ma or Jeff Mathis, and Mike Pepper. They are all nose to tail. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to watch in the top 10 overall, and that would be the GT3 class here. Engrave still with a commanding five second lead for the GT4. Oh, no! <laughs> Somebody yep. got turned off the bumper. I think it was Dave Payton who is a lap down. Well, Johnny Alford got moved out of the way as well, running P3. He's back to fifth. And then if you go farther back, Tiefker, who had gone off track and got passed by Schlosser, has been hounding him ever since. Those two have kind of separated themselves from Jeff Oaks. Here goes Siefker side by side. Coming into the final corner. Oh, boy. And able to stay even may have a little advantage here going into turn one. And trying to use some traffic as a pick as well. Oh, boy. Josh Hagee looking again here for the lead. Gunter looks a bit unsteady right now. Any little slip up here is going to allow Heggie to roll through, but Gunter got through the triple nicely. Siefker does get through on Schlosser. Rene Garcia still trying to track down Alex Howland here for the GT4 fourth place. They've been pretty close together for the last couple laps. Yeah, they, oh boy. Brody Gunter just about, I think maybe did make contact with I, the GT4 driver. Awfully close. And that'll be a picture at some point, hopefully, as the... <laughs> Eminent signs and graphics cars get side by side there for a moment. Nice picture opportunity. Oh, Gunter bottled up by GT4. This might be Heggie's opportunity. Oh, he took a look there. Yeah, wow. Still wasn't out of the woods there, but was able to get through. Garcia. This, Garcia did this, get through on Howland. This is the dash. And we're this mixed <laughs> up. The uh, feature is going to be nuts. Yeah, that's just this track, man. Oh, and then Howland and Garcia have wrecked. Uh, maybe oh, each no. other. That was Howland that we saw around in that black car right in front of our leaders. Yes, indeed. Show me that Garcia had crashed as well, but is still moving forward. Leaders getting to Garcia right now as we speak. 
Here goes Heggy. Heggy had a look, Ooh. rolls out of it, doesn't want to force it. Wish I could take a look back at the uh, contact, but may not get the opportunity to with Heggy. Really getting to the back of Gunter here. Three minutes to go. Let's take a lap around with Heggy in pursuit. One thing to go around on a quality lap, it's another to try and set up a pass somewhere. Engrave still with a good lead for the GT4s, not missing anything there for the podium. Nichols and Hamby, the top three in the GT4 class, but this is the battle for the overall win here in the dash race. Whoa. In the closing lap, Teggy's off. It's such an easy thing to do there out of turn number two. Heggy did the smart thing, did not put the power down, kind of got out of the throttle to make sure they didn't spin the tires in the grass, able to keep it moving forward, might be able to still mount a comeback. Heggy's been the faster of the two, just can't, cannot find a way around. Not for a lack of trying. So the windshield wipers on there for a moment as well, maybe a little moisture <laughs> from the grass coming up <laughs> onto the windshield. I think Gunter spritz at him. That's what it is. Yeah, that, yep. Do that trick on the interstate. I prefer to throw Skittles myself, but <laughs> the, the spritz will do. They are three wide just inside the top five here. Navigating GT4 traffic. I think that was Nate Siefker. That was crazy. I think Alex Allen was in the middle of that as well. Yeah, it's, it's getting wild. I think we're going to be about five seconds to the good of coming to the white flag instead of the checkers, but we'll wait to see. Nick Batista. Oh, oh, problems. Matt Schlosser got tangled up there, I think, with Garcia. Hopped the curb and flew into the side of the car. Those turtle curbs there on the inside of the regular curbing launched him into the GT4. Not 100% sure who it was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, it was hard to tell. We were watching a battle between uh, Nick Batista and Dan Miglin at that point. That incident happened right in front. If we can take a look. Oh, yeah, Schlosser right into the side. Oh, and then, yeah, it took a big hop. Was able to keep it off of the tire barrier to not take too much damage. But dropped down to ninth. Crazy that you could do that and only lose two spots. <laughs> Gunter to the, the 20 minute race. Gunter to the stripe with four seconds to spare, so this should be the white flag here. Yeah, especially in a 20 minute race. You're right. Uh,. He Smith asked if this is like a heat race. Uh, yeah, it's like a sprint race in, in I, I guess, in F1, except it's for full points. It's not only points to the top 10 or not only for partial points. It is a full points paying race. It's just only 20 minutes long rather than the regular 40. Nate Siefker battling for fifth, goes off the track, loses sixth now to Jeff Oaks. So he's back to seventh. Gunter with a comfortable lead. Hunter Engrave with a more than comfortable lead here on the final lap. Oh, guns are a bit hung up here with some lap traffic. He closed the gap, but he's out of time. Well, things did not go very well in the feature race last week at Watkins Glen for Brody Gunter. But well, we're starting things off right this week at Osher Slabin. Bertie Gunter is going to win the dash race here for round number three of the SRL Sports Car Championship. Heggy in second. Jeff Mathis onto the podium. He has survived an onslaught to claim his first ASRL podium. Rhett Nichols was behind the race leader across the line so he is guaranteed second that also guarantees hunter engrave the win despite the fact that he is halfway 
uh, around the track right now. Yeah, and uh, kind of doing some battling with, uh, I think this is Rick Thompson. Oh. We're in the same class, but Rick is uh, a couple laps down, I think, at this point. We'll wait for Hunter Engrave to come across the line. He'll be one of the last people to actually finish up the final lap here. Which strategy do you like going forward into the feature race? Being more tactical or being uh, less caring and more aggressive? Which do you think is going to be the way to get it done? I mean, normally I would say tactful and patient, but we've seen <laughs> aggressiveness really pay off in this series previously. So, I mean, if you if you have the wits and the, the will to do it, uh, I think being aggressive isn't necessarily a bad idea. Uh if you can get through, uh, you know, a few cars, pick up a few positions on the first lap, uh, it can pay dividends, so you don't have to do it later. Well, two of our top tacticians take Osher Slavin round number three of the season. Hunter Engrave in the GT4s and Brody Gunter in the GT3s. We'll talk to both of these gentlemen when we come back here after we shout out everybody that helps pay the bills here on Turn 200 and at the American Sim Racing League. Back to Osher Slavin in just a couple of minutes. A blind knight that uses echolocation, viewing the dark, treacherous world through sound. Trapped in a dungeon, endangered by combatants, where hazards lurk around every corner. Make sound to have vision, or don't be stealthy. Avoid impaling threats throughout the dungeon to escape. Engage with Good other prisoners. Now I've been here now. Could you find the key and unlock myself? Free them to fight back with I more allies. Help. <laughs> Take this guy. <laughs> the dungeon labyrinth has many paths and even more traps. Struggle through the darkness to find your freedom. An empty plastic bottle would give you 50 cents. A soda can, 60 cents. A used food container, 80. Wondering why I know this? Because that's my job. I am a trash picker at my school. Harry, the trash prince is on a roll today. And how is your trashy affair with Bella coming? She lets you kiss her with that stink? <laughs> Their words don't bother me. They don't know why I do what I do and my secret. I edge close to my class when I hear Bella and her friend talking. You can't be serious, Bella. You want me to break up with him for you? I would do it myself if his poverty didn't give me the creeps. Oh, you are unbelievable! I come face to face with Bella's friend. She knew I heard the conversation and couldn't meet my eyes. She hands me the new phone I bought for Bella and walks away. I saved for months to buy her this phone. I walk down the empty corridor with a heavy heart, pick the phone out of the box, slip my SIM in, and switch it on. When... Harry Parker, you have passed the poverty test? You are now the heir to Parker family's billions worth of assets? If Harry is a billionaire, why does he work as a trash picker? What is his big secret? Why did he not reveal his billionaire status to Bella? To know more, listen to the audio series Destiny Reloaded, only on Pocket FM. Turn 200's coverage of the ASRL Sports Car Championship, round number two from Oschersleben, is presented by Eminent Signs and Graphics, Mullet Music Productions, CJR Graphics, and the American Sim Racing League, celebrating 25 years of sim racing excellence.
Alrighty, folks, we are back from our commercial break, and we have the winner of the uh, Dash Race in the GT4 class, Mr. Hunter Engrave. Congratulations, partner. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I, you know, I hate to admit this, but uh, we didn't really watch you much that race because uh, you were just kind of out there all by your lonesome uh, in the lead, just kind of taking care of business. Yeah, um, it was chilling. Um the restart was where I was nervous about the start of the race, just trying to watch the chaos. Um, there was a little bit of chaos, but nothing terrible. And then just kind of after that, I was just watching the GT3s that had to come by me and be careful. And I was lucky enough, got kind of enough gap that Brody kind of lapped up to second place, didn't get to me. So I kind of found that my relative says I lapped everybody once, but I know I didn't. But, um, yeah, no, it was, it was just kind of a cruise Sunday drive, trying a few things for the, Next race. Well, it's always nice to have a crew Sunday drive because uh, there there was plenty going on around the racetrack. You just happened to not be any part of it, which for you was good this time around. But uh, congratulations on that race win. Uh, is there anybody else you'd like to thank here before we uh, let you go to the feature? Yeah, um, my, my mom, my dad for always watching these. Um, you guys for always doing an amazing broadcast. And um, thanks to Corey and um, Rick for doing a Amazing league, and shout out to my teammate Matt Slosher and also my sort of aligned person, Kevin Bonomi. Um, yeah. All righty, partner. Well, good luck in the feature. Uh, this restart, I'm sure you might be a little nervous for as well, so uh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, we'll pull in your GT3 winner now. It's time to talk to Brody Gunter for the second dash race in a row this season. Uh, welcome back to Victory Lane, partner. Congrats. Thank you, guys. Well, I mean, not that there was a lack of eventfulness at any other point during this race. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, turn one was awfully eventful there as well. Uh, from the outside pole, that uh, first turn sure bottles up pretty quick there. Yes, I, mean, I want to go and apologize to Benomi. I mean, I know if I, I was looking back at Chase. From Chase, it looks really bad with my cockpit. He didn't come into my view until like probably when I started about to hit the curb. At that point, I was on the brakes, but he was also on the brakes. I had nothing to do but to sadly tap him out of the way. It's not obviously how I want to pass him, but yeah, I hate that for him. But I hope he came to finish. I hope he came back to finish decently well. Um, oh, he didn't. I saw my relative right now, so I definitely apologize to him um, for that terrible incident. But I would say the real winner goes to Josh Heggie the entire AC. Some has some. He's figured out something in those turns because he is gaining a tenth on me and probably every major like 180 turn <laughs> i was gonna say i mean after that accident there it was it was no rest for the weary you were on defense that in, entire race and also having to juke and jive around gt4 traffic and uh disabled vehicles all over the place there i mean that was that was a madhouse <laughs> yes sir, it definitely was it's a fun track i don't know if this is a good multi-class track but hey we're gonna do it anyways <laughs> So it should be interesting to start last in this next race again. And just like Watkins Glen, I'm probably going to die at some point. So make sure you catch that. <laughs> I've I've got no comment on that. I, I seem to be the jinxer of all jinxers. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave your comments to you and uh, I won't comment on them. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime here, I've got a couple minutes left. Uh, anybody want to shout out or say hi to here from the top step? Um. I'd say Corey and Rick for, you know, obviously doing ASIL for the 25th year. That's all on the screen right in front of me right now. Pretty impressive. As well as um, tone, all, you guys at Tone 200 for broadcasting this for the second season and doing a really good job at it. Well, if my math is correct, I had to hodgepodge these numbers a little bit, but I believe that is your 32nd uh, career ASRL sports car championship victory. So uh, hopefully we're celebrating double threes here at the end of this one. But uh, uh, best of luck to you in the feature. Ah, uh, thank you. I'm going to need it. <laughs> I think everybody's going to need it. Everybody that is going to start this race is in immediate and clear danger. Um, nobody is safe. Everybody, um, yeah, everybody's in serious danger here. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we're about to see, but it's going to be interesting. Now that these drivers have a little bit more confidence, maybe they're willing to push it a little bit harder. Uh, maybe a couple drivers know what's good for him and won't do that. Yeah, well, I mean, the the fact of the matter is we're, we're going to flip this field. It was already really tight and difficult to get through in the first place, but 
Uh, now we're going to put the faster drivers towards the back, theoretically. So, um, yeah, it, it's... Uh, It'll be interesting. I, I think the real problems are going to come in the middle of the top, you know, the, the top 10 in, in both classes when you kind of mix together the drivers that might, might not necessarily be quite as fast as the fastest, but they can still definitely hold their own and hold a line. And uh, I think the uh, the drivers that feel like they're faster, kind of like Joshua Heggie, we were talking about with Brody Gunter, not able to make the pass. Uh, we might see some frustration not able to get around some traffic that they they feel like they're a lot faster than so uh, I, I feel like we are we are in for something uh, I guess chaotic is the word to use well we talked about how last week's field was absolutely stacked the invert did a lot of favors to the drivers that started up front last week is that going to be the case again tonight uh, if only because of this track we really don't know but we're about to find out as it's time to go feature race gridding here from osher slaben uh round number four of the season round number two of the night 40 minutes ahead of the drivers here and ahead of dave payton who will lead the field to green with jarrell williams who had that penalty remember he will start on the outside of the front row uh then row number two will be joshua rutherford and jj wang pretty solid row number two uh, James Lehman then after his crash will start in P5 next to Kevin Bonomi who will start on the outside of row number three did not really get to see what he could do up front maybe he'll make quick work and move himself to the front of the field uh, Matt Short and Matt Schlosser then on row number four Brian Deese and Nate Siefker round out your top 10 starters Jeff Oaks and Johnny Alford on row number six Mike Pepper and Jeff Mathis on row seven and then Josh Hagee and Brody Gunter all the way at the back of the GT3s here GT4 starting lineup. I'm not sure Fred Thompson is here anymore, so we'll put an asterisk there, but he has the provisional top starting spot. Daryl Klotz then on the outside of the front row. Rick Thompson and Nate Morris on row number two. Uh, Corey Rutherford and Indica Scarlet on the third row. Kenny Stepp and Nick Batista on row four. Dan Miglin and Alex Howland on the fifth row. Rene Garcia and Johnny Hamby on row six. Then Rhett Nichols and Hunter Engrave, the top two finishers, all the way truly at the back of the field here. Um, yeah. This is uh, this is what we got. This is uh, this is gonna be wild here. I think Matt for forty minutes here today. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think you hit it right on the head. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be crazy. But uh, that's what we love about this series. We get the multi-class racing going here in sports car championship. It is uh, it is a sight to behold. Always something to watch. Always something going on. And uh, it's gonna be no different here tonight. Uh, of course, same rules apply. It's just a 40-minute race, so uh, there is going to be a pit stop at some point. But the drivers can go uh, pretty much most of the way through the race uh, before they have to come down pit road. You see a lot of folks kind of wait till the last possible second uh, to come down pit road sometimes. So we'll take a take a, an eye on that, keep a look on it. And uh, the track temperature has dropped pretty significantly since the first race, down to 73 degrees on the track temperature now. So uh, maybe a little bit more grip to find out there for the drivers, but I think that's just gonna make it all the more crazy uh, as we get going. The calm before the storm once again. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to take too long for this storm to spin up, I don't think. Jarrell Williams started on the outside of the front row here. The reigning GT4 champion, Alex Howland, his teammates swapped places uh, in the team. So Jarrell taking a crack at the GT3s. Had a couple of decent runs going last week at Watkins Glen. Started this week's dash race with a drive through penalty that has allowed him to get this starting spot here. Most of the other uh, class front runners to start this race found their way there through attrition. JJ Wang, Joshua Rutherford, uh, Dave Payton. All had problems there. So did Daryl Klotz and Rick Thompson. Now, I'm not too sure we're not gonna have more problems here pretty quick. It is certainly possible, especially with the difficulty of turns one and two. Those are not easy corners, so uh, diving in there with with a lot of cars behind you, uh, it can it can be pretty hairy, pretty scary. But uh, we are getting ready to go green here. 
full field invert, cold tires, cold track, tight turns, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It's time for round number two of Osher Schlebed Night here on Turn 200 of the ASRL Sports Car Championship feature. Number two of the season is underway. Williams surging ahead. Oh, Peyton goes way wide. Here's JJ Wang up the middle to make it three wide. Wang, wow, sends it. Oh, he clipped the turtle. Wang is off. Three wide behind them. It's Williams with the lead. Kevin Bonomi now going for the top spot. Three wide for third. Daryl Klotz has the advantage right now for the GT4s, but up front it's Bonomi and Williams still side by side for the point. Freddie Gunter wow. went off the track, he's back on. Oh, a couple of drivers off track farther back. Corey Rutherford. The... Daryl Klotz is now the leader in the GT4 class. Rick Thompson hanging on to second. Bonomi to the lead. My goodness. Wild opening lap here, and we're not even done. Oh, Indica Scarlet oh, problems. Indica's off. Still side by side here in the GT3 class. Whoa, Gunter just about got turned around, made a hell of a save. Gunter loses two spots on that exchange while Kevin Bonomi up front trying to pull away and is doing a nice job. Got several car lengths back to Jarrell Williams. Jeff Mathis in Joshua Rutherford battling for position here as well. Mathis will take that spot. GT4. That's a lap of the books. Big stack up here in the GT4. Oh, Klotz! Klotz the leaders around. Rick Thompson goes to the point. Oh, Klotz Rutherford drops all hits the way the out. As well. Oh, boy. Turn 14, the trouble spot here. And that is another meatball for Daryl Klotz. Boy, his night has gone from great to bad here on the feature. In just one lap. Yeah, and that means Rick Thompson takes back over the lead here in the GT4 class. Uh, as Rene Garcia and Dan Miglin in tow, but uh, a pretty decent little gap there. So uh, those two are going to need to pick up the pace a little bit. Oh. Rhett Nichols trying to make his way through. That was Miglin that just went off track. He gives up third. Batista and Nichols side by side for that third position now. Wow, nearly contact between those two. I would be worried about Red Nichols being in third already at this point in the race. I I would as well. Thompson the leader, Garcia in second, Nichols in third. Bonomi the overall leader, Jarrell Williams still in second. James Lehman is up to third, and he is tracking down Jarrell Williams rather quickly. Lots of GT3 cars close together in the back half of the top 10 and then outside of the top 10 as well. Joshua Rutherford, Brian Dees, Joshua Hege. I know it's going to be a few minutes, but oh, Rutherford is off. That's Joshua Rutherford off into the sand trap out of hotel. Brody Gunter stuck himself to the back of this group as well. Looking to get around Mike Pepper. And for the lead, we've missed the lead change here for the GT4s. Rene Garcia just got through on Rick Thompson. Wow, that so happened Garcia quickly. to the point. Yes, it did. And what's interesting is Rhett Nichols still a, a good little margin off of Rick Thompson as well. So Nichols seemed to be... Uh, pretty close. Don't know if he had a problem somewhere or not, but um, I, I think Nichols is still tracking him down. Just had quite a bit of a gap there after they were side by side and three wide for most of the GT4 pack on the opening it, lap. It has been wild. Yes. Two second lead for Bonomi over Williams. Williams trying to keep James Lehman at bay here. That's the podium. Matt Schlosser in fourth, Nate Siefker in fifth. Bonomi up front, piping in the purple lap. I guess we should have seen this coming. Bonomi qualifying well at the beginning of the night and then uh, getting sent off track in the very first turn of the dash race. I guess we should have seen him doing uh, quite well with the invert <laughs> here coming probably. 
Yeah, starting P6, and it took him no time to get to the front of this field. Hunter Engrave finally working through some of this GT4 class here. Just got around Johnny Hamby and Nick Batista. Still trying to clear Batista in totality and finally does. Rick Thompson trying to hang with Rene Garcia here, but all of a sudden, his mirrors are full of Rhett Nichols. Top three, equidistant right now. About four tenths of a second between. And Thompson started to fade as he's shifted to defense. It's only been five minutes, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like an eternity. Both battles in the top five of the GT3 class. Guy Alford all over the back of Nate Siefker. Siefker not too far from Matt Schlosser as well. Schlosser sits in fourth. Will we see another late race charge from Nate Siefker here? I've never quite seen him go full red mist like he did last week after the solo spin. That was one of the oh. more impressive victories. Oh, Problems, Rhett Nichols is that's off. Rick Thompson and Rhett Nichols. Yes. Holy cow. I don't know what happened there. I'm assuming the two made contact. Matt Short, Joshua Hagee side by side down in a turn. I thought that was turn one. It's not. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> Brody Gunter in tow as well. Lost where I was here for a moment. Yeah, Jeff Oaks with a meatball flag. I think his race might be over, unfortunately. We're going to queue up that, uh, that incident between Nichols and Thompson here when we get a chance. Williams has faded three seconds behind the race leader, Kevin Bonomi. James Lehman's still hanging right here in third. Awfully close from fourth on back. Yeah, there is a big gap between Short and Mathis. Mathis sits in seventh, Short sits in eighth. But other than that, yeah, you're right. Most of the class is pretty well put to all together here. So now the race for the GT4 podium is on as Alex Howland has moved into second after the contact there between Rick and Rhett. But Howland now under fire from Hunter Engrave. And Engrave going to shoot it up the inside here in the final corner, a little bit wide. And there's, a, I think, a GT4 That's... car off. That is Corey Rutherford. <laughs> Engrave not able to get it done. Oh, Gunter with contact to Matt Short. They nearly got hooked together there. They're battling for uh, spot number at nine right now after Josh Hagee just got through on short. Looked like Engrave made a little bit of contact with Howland as you said that as well. Wasn't able to make the pass then, but now does. And there's Gunter right on the heels of Matt Short. That was a great save by Short. He was all sorts of sideways into the chicane of all places. Layman continuing to cut into the gap. Oh! Second is, oh, there goes Short. Short, a huge, huge wheelie off of the turtle. Oh, that oh, might have man. been a meatball flag. He, he just pulled right off the racetrack does not take much. Meanwhile, I was just about to say Lehman was tracking down. Jarrell Williams Williams makes a mistake and Lehman gets through. So move Lehman up to P2. Williams back to third. Well, we've got about 19 replays to look at now. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. You could go all the way back to the first corner and watch J.J. Wang take flight on probably the same curb that uh, Matt Short just hit. Well, I, I have one queued up already. We got Rhett Nichols and Rick Thompson making contact. <laughs>
or what I assume is going to be contact. Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Yep. Nichols on the inside of Thompson. Thompson comes down just a little bit off of the outside of the racetrack, but wasn't given a whole lot of room and uh, turns Nichols right into the outside wall. I couldn't quite tell if they actually touched or not, but you're right. There was not a whole lot of operating space there for uh, Rick Thompson. Here is the J.J. Wang incident right off the rip. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty close to what Matt Short just did. <laughs> Although Wang carried a lot more speed and actually hit the tire barriers very hard as well. Wang was able to continue, but then crashed later also. And uh, battle between Schlosser, Siefker, and Johnny Alford continues here. Also got a battle brewing here for the GT4 class lead. Hunter Engrave just about sent it into the back bumper of Rene Garcia there. Awfully close. We talked about uh, everybody kind of using themselves up here in the opening laps, and Hunter Engrave did not do that, and he's at the front. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is, but, I mean, with as much speed as he had on the rest of the field, it seemed, in the in the initial 20-minute race, uh, Engrave probably felt like he could take it pretty easy and uh, be just fine, and lo and behold, here he is. Probably not, uh, you know, too antsy to make this pass. Isn't going to do anything too wild and crazy. As Matt Schlosser has had a problem. Schlosser off the track down after turn one. Schlosser from fourth has dropped down to the eighth position now. Also on that lap in 12th, Joshua Rutherford has crashed. He is towed back to the pits. Oh, Nate, oh, Nate up down. That was Stiefker. It is all happening. Seifker with an unassisted spin, and he got absolutely clobbered. And he got clobbered by Brody Gunter, who has picked up a meatball flag for the second feature in a row. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, he, he's really got to stop saying that about himself. He, I guess. He's summoning bad juju on himself at this point. Ay, ay, ay. So Gunter who was going to pick up three spots on this lap alone just by not crashing. As a meatball flag. Hopefully he remembers to take the fast repair this time. Unlike last week where there was no visible damage on that car, certainly that car is, is in a bad way. Joshua Rutherford in the chat. Messed up the chicane and going to have to take a fast repair here. Engrave's still hounding Garcia here for the GT4 lead. Yeah, that chicane is fun, but I would imagine in a race it's pretty stressful. Engrave still hasn't quite found a way around Garcia. Brody Gunter has made his way into the pits to take his fast repair. And they should be good to the end on fuel of really pitting after lap four, I think, was when the window opened, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was. Oh, Garcia's early. off! Oh. Garcia off the track. There goes Engrave through to the point. Oh. Just sent it a bit wide there. Engrave doesn't even have to get his hands dirty here. Waited for the mistake. It gets on through and. Does not really have anybody in front of him. Just has a clear track to work with. So Engrave Garcia Howland right now, the podium. Howland uh, has a fast approaching Johnny Hamby to deal with shortly, I'm sure. Meanwhile, up at the front, it's Kevin Bonomi with a nearly four and a half second lead right now over James Lehman. Jarrell Williams is closing back in on Lehman, though. So Williams sticking right with. Your P2 runner, and Lehman is around. Lehman is off. And into the barriers hard. He is done. Yeah, it looks like Lehman's going to have to take a tow. Could take his fast repair, but knowing him, he's not going to be happy. He might be done for the night. 
He was trying to work underneath GT4 traffic, clipped one of the turtles, and spun. All right, we got lots of replays to look at here. <laughs> we have more replays than racing at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there's Seifger with his entire nose missing, trying to make a pass on Brian Deese, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Seifger, to point out, no meatball flag, somehow. Uh... Yep. I don't know. <laughs> I gave up asking questions a long time ago. Without without that uh, front clip, that almost looks like Kermit on the front of his car there. <laughs> it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> if this battle ever subsides, I have Matt Short's incident queued up, and then we have um, a multitude of more to look at. Oh, Deese a oh. little bit wide. That's that same corner that Engrave made the pass for the lead. There goes Seifker. Miraculously to P8, and there goes Deese to pit road. Yep. All right. Here is the incident for short. And he actually hit the first set of turtles. J.J. Wing hit the second set there in turn one. But that is what spelled disaster for Matt Short. Oh, that's not one. I wanted. We're going to queue up another one here. Sorry about that. This is what I was looking for. Here's the Nate. Actually, we're going to go to a battle for position Second, in the GT3 yep. class. Johnny Alford around Jarrell Williams. So Alford, the bag man, up to P2. And yeah, Jeff Mathis. Mathis is here as well. Yeah, Mathis, good showing here. Working around a little bit of traffic right now. That is Dan Miglin, currently fourth. Oh, and oh, I thought Miglin was trying to get down pit road there for a moment. Matt Schlosser is down pit road. So is Nick Batista. Though not quite halfway through the race, some drivers opting to come down early. Usually not something we see. Typically, if you're going to get farther away from that halfway point, it's usually going to be after most of the time, I feel like. But some drivers opting for the undercut rather than the over to see how that works out for them. Well, after the problems for James Lehman and the, all this battling now for seconds, uh, this lead has exploded for Kevin Bonomi. It's up to 10 seconds. Yeah, up to 10 seconds, but still a lot of race left. Bonomi can't really relax at this point, but doesn't have to take any high risks. No four and a half moves for the 75 <laughs> here for the, no. Rest of the race. No flying elbow? No. Oh, too bad. We've seen plenty already. Uh, 4.8 second lead for Hunter Engrave, and the two leaders are about to converge here. Bonomi to Engrave. There went Joshua Heggie down pit road in the GT3 class. Was sitting in fifth at the time he came down. Still battling really hard here for second, third, and fourth. There's All the two leaders. Ships passing in the night. Engrave going to let Bonomi through on the inside here. Alrighty, most of these battles have pretty much subsided. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and go to the Nate Seifker crash replay. <laughs> Gonna be in a left-hander sweeper. Seifker just loses the back end. 
And trying to get it turned around makes major contact with Brody Gunter. Gunter had to come down pit road and take a fast repair. Somehow, Seifker did not. And with Seifker yet to make his pit stop, he can come in and take it just in his regularly scheduled point. And still come out pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, that is a great luxury at this point. Oh, Williams and Alford got tangled up there with Rene Garcia. That was awfully close. That turn one is just... It's got a bad vibe. It's certainly not a place you want to catch any traffic. It's got an evil infernal energy. No roll required on that one. Matt Schlosser. Couldn't tell if he was trying to come down pit road or not, but he was certainly on the pit road entrance line. And now he's not on pit road. Yeah, Schlosser, I think, has actually already been down pit road. Yes. thought we had another incident to look at, but I'm not finding it here. That may be all the replays we have queued up. Did you do the James Lehman one? No, no, I did not. That is the one I was looking for. Thank you. All right. And here it is. Oh, man, that is also down in turn one. Lehman catches the same turtles that Matt Short hit. Doesn't send him up in the air like it did with Short. I mean, not as far, I should say, but uh, does get the left front up in the air and just completely sends that car sideways. And Lehman just head on into the tire barrier. We've picked up our first pass-through penalty for the incident point uh, limit. Nate Morris is going to make a trip down pit road. Hunter Engrave took a trip through the gravel trap in turn 14 last time, and I think much to Rene Garcia's dismay, uh, Engrave was still two seconds faster last time around. <laughs> Diami, uh, Dan Miglin, down pit road. Uh, your top six drivers have yet to make their pit oh! stop. Oh! Engrave just got turned. Engrave got turned there. I think that was Jeff Mathis. Engrave, I don't think, hit anything, but certainly went off the track in a huge way. That was nearly disaster. We missed that one, but we do have the replay here. Oh, wow. Contact between them a couple of times. Space is uh, highly sought after here. Would certainly appear that way. There's contact between the two of them. Out of that rounded turn. And then again going through the S's. And you're right. Engrave didn't really get spun around. Just took a little trip through the, uh, through the greenery there. You're right. That was Jeff Mathis, by the way. And I think that is a... A driver difference there, because I think if that's me in the cockpit of the 49 machine, well, first of all, I'm not leading. Second of all, I think I, I torched that. Uh, so, <laughs> nicely done on the save there by Engrave, regardless of how it started. So, Engrave right now is 10th overall. That just goes to show you how ravaged this GT3 class has been. And Jeff Mathis is going to be the first one down pit road inside the top five. Mathis here on lap number 18 down pit road. Nate Siefker to follow, I imagine. We're getting a new front bumper on this machine. <laughs> just a guess. One would think. Yeah, well... 
Yep, there it is. Gonna say if aerodynamics weren't a thing, you might keep your front tires cooler, but uh, I think you need the uh, the front fascia more. One could say this ain't short track racing. No, it's I don't know. Honestly, I mean, it's looked like as, it. As far as road courses goes, I guess this is pretty much a short track road course. Brands Hatch Indy. Oh, we got Knock Hill later this season. That's this is a preview of that, I think. Yeah, Knock Hill is aptly named because they are going to be knocking fenders off left and right on the hills. Yes. <laughs> There's a race leader, Kevin Bonomi, down pit road. Bonomi for his scheduled service. Johnny Alford bypasses pit road entry, so he will pick up the lead. Jerome Williams stays out as well. Hmm. Uh, we got some shenanigans going on. Always shenanigans in the chat. By the way, to ICR's point, uh, yes, I think he's correct. Because we, uh, we had that same very exact scenario happen a couple of times at Watkins Glen uh, last week as well, where it was going into the corner, probably downshifting, and the, the car just goes straight around on you with pretty much no warning. And it was the same guy prominently twice in a row. In the same car, both times. Got to be careful, brother. <laughs> Bonomi on and off pit road with no issues. He should very easily be the one to cycle out to the lead once we start getting some pit stops underway. Wants to really get into the thick of them anyways. Alford the leader, rounding turn 13 right now. We'll see if he elects to come down pit road this time. And he will not. Williams bypasses as well. It's a long way back to Mike Pepper. Good to see Drell Williams having a good race here, by the way. Oh, Brady Gunster is off the track, and he is pounding the barriers once again. That might be the end of the night for him, truly, with no more fast repair. And that's right down there into turn one through turns one and two again. Man, that has just been... So treacherous tonight. Here's a look at that replay. Oh, and I take that back. That was through the. That's actually in my, McDonald's. Yeah. My mistake. I'm sorry. Didn't get a great wide shot. I thought that right hander was turned two, but you're right. That was actually McDonald's. And uh, Brody Gunter will not be rocking and rolling any longer. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Now go McDonald's. Yeah. Well, uh, Gunter, I don't think actually picked up a meatball flag, Nate Zeefker style there. So he's going to continue on, and he's still in the top ten somehow. Here comes Johnny Alford to pit road. That is going to give Terrell Williams the lead. Williams stays out. The bagman finished P5 in the opening race. Came into tonight as the points leader. Looking pretty good to cycle out to the podium once again here. Special cars, special drivers. Special broadcasters, indeed, my friend. Here comes Hunter Engrave from the GT4 lead. That will give the point to Rene Garcia. But somebody in the chat gets my jokes at least. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Thompson down pit road here as well. 
Thompson with a much better feature race here than in the sprint. Had some problems early on there in the sprint. They just kind of compounded. And Nate Morris has been disqualified. First one of the night. I'm surprised, honestly, it took this long for somebody to get disqualified. Yeah, we, you know, I, I didn't mention it, but when that that drive-through penalty happens, uh, it's uh, pretty imminent that a uh, with 20 minutes left in the race, the DQ is probably coming at some point. But There's just, yeah, it's impossible to navigate this track really yeah. without picking up incident points. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of drivers that are close to that drive-through limit, I would think. Leaders overall came in. That was Jarrell Williams and Mike Pepper. They are on and off pit road without issue, and that gives control of this race back to Kevin Bonomi. And Bonomi with a healthy 11 and a half second lead right now. Bonomi multiple wins last season, including sweeping the Nurburgring in the season finale. Rene Garcia, Alex Howland down pit road in the GT4 class. Ken Estep as well. So Hunter Engrave will now take back over the lead for the GT4s. Good to have Ken Estep back tonight. Had to miss last week. I haven't really called his name out much, but tonight that's probably yeah, a good thing. That is, <laughs> that's better than the alternative. Another driver we have not really called out at all tonight, other than a couple times here and there, Johnny Hamby, I think is in a good position here to cycle up. Maybe to a podium spot, although he's trailing Rhett Nichols right now, and I'm not sure if Rhett has been down pit road or not. I think everybody in the GT4 class at this point has been down pit road, so uh, Hamby's going to have to track down Rhett Nichols to get to that podium position, and that is a mighty difficult task here tonight. Well, Nichols had those problems getting tangled together with Rick Thompson, but this is a good rebound. From that, this is Rene Garcia right in front of him. So this is the challenge here for second in class. And by far the closest two on the racetrack <laughs> to each other. Anywhere. For position, at least. Set an awfully close call with Dave Payton and I think Hunter Engrave. And Payton is going to call it a night. I think he is towed back to the pits. So trouble for your pole sitter. Bonomi with a comfortable 11 second lead over Joshua Hege. Johnny Alford in P3. Jarrell Williams in fourth. Jeff Mathis rounds out your top five. The GT4s, it's Engrave, Garcia, Nichols, Hamby, and Howland, the top five. Ooh, Joshua Rutherford has spun out of the final turn and is doing some donuts. Final turn is one of, I think, three completely blind turns if you're sitting in the cockpit of the car. So the last thing you would want to see is somebody parked straight across doing donuts. <laughs> Luckily, nobody was coming up. Here's that final corner that Brett Nichols and Rene Garcia are getting through. Nichols had a, a couple potential opportunities, could have taken a desperate move, but... Hasn't been able to really set up a, a legitimate passing situation. Uh, 
has a decent run here into turn three. All of a sudden, we do have a battle for fourth overall as well. Jarrell Williams has slipped back to Jeff Mathis. is a much different line there through the sweeping left trying to go more outside to in to set up a run down the little straight chute working around some traffic here this is Rick Thompson in the GT4 whoa Williams got that thing pretty on out Good battle between Mike Pepper, or excuse me, Nate Seifker and Matt Schlosser now as well. Well, they heard there were no battles and decided to battle it up. And Seifker off track there. Had an issue. He is going to drop pretty far behind Flosser now. About two and a half seconds behind. Mathis and Williams still pretty close together here. Nichols still has not gotten around Garcia either. And it's pulled Johnny Hamby into this mix here as well. He's inside of a second now. We'll talk to your top two runners from each class at the end of this race in just about uh, three and a half to four minutes time. And a reminder before everybody gets scattered to the winds here tonight, tomorrow night we're super speedway racing with the Max V CNC Home Design Truck Series. We're back at Talladega, baby. So hope to see you here at 9.15 p.m. Eastern time for Max V Trucking at Talladega. I've really been fighting off buying last minute tickets to the real life race on Sunday. Ooh. Just a, a little jaunt down across <laughs> the Tennessee Alabama line for me. Oh, Garcia. Pretty loose there, but with the race leader going through, uh, Nichols not able to take advantage. But Garcia has made a couple of sm very small mistakes. Got up pretty high on the curbing in a couple of corners. It kind of upset the car a little bit. And then got pretty loose. Wow, look at Nichols off into the grass. All slipping sideways as well. Here goes Nichols. Opportunity to the outside. Oh, nope. Yeah, that's that's a tough place to make anything work. And this should the be the flag. white flag. Yep. So 10 plus second leads for both leaders in both classes. We have this battle between Garcia and Nichols for second. And Williams still under fire from Jeff Mathis for fourth in the GT3s. Oh, Seeker spun from seventh. Joshua Rutherford has spun from 11th. He's back on the track. Seifker's still parked.
down the stadium stretch for one final time here, Kevin Bonomi. Just three turns, now make it two turns away from taking another victory here with ASRL. It's career victory number three here in the ASRL Sports Car Championship for Kevin Bonomi. He takes Osher Slibbin. And final opportunity for Nichols to try and make the move on Garcia, not going to be enough. Garcia in second, third for Nichols, fourth for Hamby, and that guarantees once again another win for Hunter Engray. Still working right now, round turn number three. Yeah, very for the podium. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Very much the same situation for Engrave going to uh, have a whole lap to do. That's actually the uh, that is Bonomi right behind Engrave right now yeah. on his cool down lap. The overall podium tonight belongs to second place finisher Josh Heggie and third place finisher Johnny Alford. And something tells me this track may end up on the list of tracks never to return to. <laughs> I would we had fun, that. though. We, we had fun. You are right. I'm sure the viewers had a lot of fun with this one as well. But uh, I would imagine that the radio was probably pretty busy tonight. Uh, it was a spicy nugget night, to say the least, over the radio. But only back to his winning ways here early. Hunter Engrave as well. I believe this is his first GT4 victory. All of his wins last season. All five of them came in the GT3. Hunter Engrave wins the GT4 feature at Osher Schleben. Career victory number six. No burnouts here. We'll talk to the top two finishers from each class. As the results are now official, let's go ahead and uh, run through your class finishing orders. Bonomi and Hagee, the top two. Johnny Alford will finish in third. Jarrell Williams in fourth. Jeff Mathis will round out your top five. Matt Schlachter in sixth. Mike Pepper in seventh. Freddie Gunter then in P8. Nate Siefker will slip all the way down to ninth there on the final lap. Brian Deese in 10th. Joshua Rutherford in 11th. J.J. Wang in 12th. Dave Payton, I believe the last car running in class in 13th. James Lehman in 14th. Matt Short and Jeff Oaks then. The rest of the GT3 finishing order. For the GT4s, it's the win for Hunter Engrave, Renee Garcia in 2nd. Ryan Nichols in 3rd. Uh, Johnny Hamby, P4. Alex Howland will round out the top 5. Rick Thompson in 6th. Uh, Dan Minkland in P7, Kenny Stepp in 8th, Indica Scarlet in 9th, and 10th for Nick Batista, 11th for Corey Rutherford, he's the last one running. Nate Morris got disqualified, then Daryl Klotz and a DNS from Fred Thompson, who was scheduled to be on pole. Uh, that is uh, how that shakes out. We'll go in search now of your second place finisher in the GT4s. Pulling from 420 Motorsports straight into booth 200 here second place finisher is renee garcia uh got the elbows out there in the closing laps nice defense there to hold off rat nichols there for uh seemingly quite a few laps yeah um it was it was interesting i never knew that hit it so the first few laps he was behind me i was just i guess riding thinking he would eventually pit and then it just came to me like i don't think he's going to pit <laughs> so then i started stepping it up but it was hard. It was nice battling with him. Very clean. Nothing for Hunter. That's a whole different class right there. So, to me, it's a victory. I will take it. Uh, Matt, what do you got? Yeah, congratulations on the uh, on the podium here. A good uh, good little bounce back, kind of from the sprint race. Um, difficult track to to make passes. Uh, I would imagine that kind of came to your to your favor. There was it difficult to play defense, or did the the track kind of do it for you a little bit there? Uh, yeah, the, the first race was, it was okay. I mean, I took it easy on the start. The second race, I definitely attacked more on the start, tried to gain a little more positions. Um, I knew that was the only way to get up there as fast as I did. And at the end there, yeah, I mean, the track definitely helped me defend there. Um, I had to go defensive in the last two laps for sure, but the track does help. Um, so small, it's hard to pass, though. So 
it, it really does help. You have to be very, very clean and aggressive to get by, and 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 it, it was just fun. Uh, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, shout outs for you here tonight. Yeah, my family, everyone, friends, um, Eminent Science and Graphics, um, and you guys. Appreciate it, fellas. Absolutely. Go celebrate the P2. We'll hopefully talk to you again next week. Sounds good. I'll we'll pull up your GT4 race winner. A sweep of the night. First one of the season. Get the brooms out for Hunter and Grave. Uh, congrats on the win. Thank you. Well, um, we called out everybody's name in the first three laps in your class, I think, except for you. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you're up there challenging for the lead after all of the dust sort of settles. Uh, that was a, a plan well executed. Yeah, just... Just patience, like I always did in the GT3. It's just let everybody spread out, make their own mistakes, take a few laps, and then once the field kind of calms down, just kind of everybody gets single file out. Then that's kind of when I start making moves. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be part of the chaos. I like to avoid chaos. <laughs> I don't blame you, uh, Matt. What do you got for the race winner? Yeah, congrats on uh, another race win and a sweep. I feel like we. It's not that. Uh, not often that we see that from you. Um, class of the field here tonight. Uh, coming into the night, were you kind of expecting that? Did you know you had a lot of speed? I mean, how were you feeling uh, coming to a track that I'm sure not many folks have turned many laps at? Yeah, um, I did a little bit of extra practice this week because I didn't know the track 100%. Um, I wanted to rip my hair out. Um, I don't like this track at all, really. Um, I was worried for a few people. I thought there would be a few more fast guys that would have shown up tonight. Wish they didn't, but I was I was worried about um Nicholas. Um, he was he was pretty quick and everything, so I was I was kind of worried about that and just one mistake could end your night. So you just gotta kind of keep your ball game up with traffic and everything and all that. And had almost one old crap moment for a minute, but overall it was clean for the most part. Uh, that was gonna be my last question. There was uh, how high did the the heart rate get there when you tangled with uh, Jeff Mathis there through the chicane? It was it was pretty high. <laughs> I would say almost got a heart attack. Um, I'm like, oh no! I was hoping he wouldn't make the move. I saw him in the last second. I'm like, oh no, he's gonna go for it. It was a little contact, and I just didn't want to slide back up. I got off the wall, but I didn't want to slide up and hit anybody. And um, we kept going. Um, he said apologies afterwards. I know he doesn't mean to. There was just people behind him that were for position, and he want he wanted to just get going, which I don't blame him. I would be the same way. So there's no hard feelings, and yeah, no, I have a lot of respect for him. And it was just low contact. He was just trying to help his teammate out. <laughs> uh, Shout-outs for you again here tonight. Um, my mom, my dad, um, for always watching. You guys always still do a phenomenal job at broadcasting. Um, yeah, and Corey and Rick for doing a phenomenal job in this league, like always. And um, Matt Slash, my teammate, and um, my other person, Kevin, who won. In his class, so good job for him after having a little rough one the first one. So, yeah. All right, partner, go celebrate the double wins here, and we'll talk to you again next week. Thank you very much. All righty. It's a second second place in the feature race this week for Josh Heggie. Uh, congrats on uh, the podium once again here. Thanks. Um, yeah, this was, uh, this was a wild night, uh, about as wild as we may see this season. Don't want to say that yet, but, uh, I mean, what did the chaos all look like from, uh, your windshield and, and, uh, wing mirrors today? Well, I thought I'd see more, honestly, but I'll have to watch, watch the broadcast. I expected there to be quite, quite a bit of, to door, door banging here. I know I had a hard time getting by. It's a hard track to pass on and, uh, I saw some slower GT3s coming up on the pit lane, and I decided to go take an early pit stop, see if I could undercut. And I think I, I think I did, did pretty good there. I didn't really have to battle all, all the way up to second, from like seventh to second or something like that. Had a pretty clean race. I don't think I wrecked anybody. So that's good. Oh, uh, you'd be on the short list then, and I, I think you're right. I don't think you did wreck anybody tonight. So, uh, Matt, what do you got? Yeah, congrats on the on the P2. I mean, you said it coming in tonight. Thought there was uh, probably going to be some door banging going on, but I mean, how do you balance the you know being aggressive with making sure that you make it all the way through the race? Because uh, this is a track that it's easy to end your night in the blink of an eye. Yeah, I know uh, they had this track on officials like two weeks ago, so I got quite a few races. So I think just being comfortable about where you're at and 
you know, if you're, you're going to have to break a little more if you're on the inside line and just knowing how to race off the racing line if you're going to pass somebody. and Being comfortable on the track makes a big difference. Driving scared, dangerous. <laughs> Three seconds for you to open up this season. Pretty good stuff. Um, I know we'll be talking to you more down the line here, but let's get some shout-outs for you here tonight. Uh, Eminent Signs and Graphics running uh, on my door. Probably seen that out there. It's uh, Rene Garcia. I have to thank uh, Nick Batista for sponsoring the race and both Rene, Nick, and Calvin for uh, helping me out with my iRacing subscription for 2024. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even be here. <laughs> All right, partner. Well, oh yeah, go ahead. And uh, and I don't know what the viewership's like here, but anybody that's watching, thanks a lot. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we had, a, we had a pretty rowdy crowd here tonight, and it was easy with a with a night like this to to get them all riled up. So, um, uh, yeah, go celebrate another podium. We'll talk to you again here soon. Thanks, Tommy, Matt. All righty. Well, we just talked to his teammate. Now let's talk to Kevin Bonomi for the first time this season as a race winner. Uh, welcome back to Booth 200. Congrats on the win. Thank you. It was an exciting night. Yeah. Um, I thought this might happen after the first turn problems uh, that we <laughs> had here. But we knew you had some blistering pace and you did not get to see it there in the dash race. And then all of a sudden, you go from six to first there and just, what, a lap, a lap and a half, if even that. Yeah, it was a solid lap. I don't know what happened into turn one. It just everyone missed their breaking point, it looked like. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was kind of funny from my perspective. But in the first race, it was kind of just disappointing. I had the corner entirely, and I guess Brody missed his breaking point, or I don't know. It's racing. But, yeah, it was a good race. Uh, Matt, what do you got for the race winner? Yeah, congrats on the race win. I mean, yeah, at, coming into that second race, you know, you're starting, you know, pretty pretty close to up front with some of the maybe slower drivers kind of up there with you. Uh, are you sitting there kind of licking your chops a little bit, or are you trying to keep a good head on your shoulders and not get too ahead of yourself? No, I'm definitely, like, chin bricks almost, especially when I see <laughs> JJ in that Ford, which is literally a moving chicane around here. I, I'm scared. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, third victory of your ASRL career here tonight, and a well-earned one at that, especially after. Uh, I feel like things can dogpile here so easily. I, I would have been down and out after uh, the first turn incident there in the dash race, but uh, an excellent recovery and a dominant victory at that. So uh, congrats to you on the win. Uh, anybody want to shout out or say hi to? Well, thank you for the win, or thank you for the congratulations, and I would like to shout out my brothers. Hopefully they're watching. And my the rest of my family that are hopefully watching as well. <laughs> and I almost forgot my wonderful teammate Hunter Engrave that got that win in GT4. <laughs> All righty, well go partner as a, or a go party as a team partner. We'll we'll talk to you again here soon. Thank you so much. All righty, well I think I'm trying to speak German right now. My English is fading slowly but surely uh, after a night of uh, interesting. Door-to-door, -door, short track-style road course racing here. Multi-class GT3s and GT4s. Uh, what a night. And uh, I don't really know what else to say outside of that. Do you have any thoughts to wrap this up? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was great racing. I mean, this series, uh, you know, we, we're getting, you know, nearly 15 drivers in both classes consistently here this season. And uh, they've, been, they've been putting on a show here. I, I'm very excited to see... Uh, what they got coming up with the uh, the tracks that we have on the schedule. Uh, you're, you, nobody's going to want to miss it. If you're enjoying it, you are going to want to be here every Wednesday because they are putting it down and they are putting it down hard, uh, both the GT3s and the GT4s. And I guess all that's left to do is to thank all the lovely folks that were watching with us here tonight. Uh, we had quite a few in the chat. Always good to see. Uh, Goodleaf, of course, was here. Don Golden cheering on the Rutherford boys. Uh, he Smith, thanks for tuning in, partner. Uh, Josh Rutherford there at Mullet Music Productions uh, also is the, the man that made the uh, made the theme song for the ASRL. So um, doing great stuff there. I think released it on Spotify as well. So uh, if you want to listen to it uh, on, in your free time, you can go 
listen to it. Uh, the Mullet Music Production Spotify. Uh, Ryan Diet State on Sim Racing. Uh, Jan Van Leer at ICR. Uh, who else? Monstrosity DMB. And I think that was it. If I missed you, I'm sorry. But thank you guys for tuning in and watching uh, and chatting with us. Lots of, uh, lots of comments here tonight. I always appreciate that. DMB, is that drum and bass? Is that was that what I'm picking up here? I don't know. I'll have to go check out Monstrosity after this. But uh, regardless, yes, thank you to everybody that was hanging out with us here tonight. Uh, and uh, a lot of good stuff coming up, including uh, a best of luck shout out to Heath Smith tomorrow night trying to defend the Super Speedway crown as the Max V CNC Home Design Struck Series rolls into Talladega. We're at the Super Speedway uh, tomorrow night, 9.15 p.m. Eastern time for that. Uh, it is a PMR double header on Sunday afternoon. The Sunday Top Split Strength of Field broadcast from Rudskogan uh, is where you can find us that are normally scheduled 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time window there on Sunday afternoon. But at the top of the next hour, we will be live with action from Mission O, and the driver voted short track that we'll be attending is Legacy Phoenix. Uh, so, yes, that is where you'll find Mission O for their third ever race. First time not at a super speedway. Uh, and uh, uh, technically, I think the last time not at the super speedway this season as well. So, um, that is what we got for you there. Until we get back to next Wednesday night, we're back here with the ASRL Sports Car Championship from Imola for rounds at number five and six on week number three of competition. And that is next week from Imola for the SRL Sports Car Championship. Thank you to everybody that supports us here on Turn 200. Uh, thank you to Whiplash Sim Cams. Thank you um, to uh, Pocket FM. And thank you to Echo Blade by Echo Blade on Steam, please. Uh, thank you to Mullet Music Productions for the awesome theme song. And yes, Matt said it. Uh, check out Mullet Music Productions on anywhere you get your music from. Uh, to check out uh, everything that uh, Joshua's got cooking up there, including the Daredevil theme, which was just put, uh, posted up today. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, go add the Daredevil theme song to all of your workout playlists. It's a banger. You won't regret it. Um, thank you to um, CGR Graphics as well. And uh, thank you to Eminent Signs and Graphics as well. Thank you to Renee Garcia for uh, supporting the SRL Sports Car Championship with Eminent Signs and Graphics. Uh, and thank you to the American Sim Racing League as well, celebrating 25 years of sim racing excellence uh, and uh, more of that on display here tonight. As This was a tough one, but uh, we've had some survivors, uh, believe it or not, and uh, they will survive to race another day next week at Imola. That's all we got for you here tonight. Uh, for everybody with the ASRL, for the GOAT, the one and only Mr. Matt Williamson, I'm Tommy Cook. Until we meet again, we say so long from Osher Slabin where Hunter Engraves sweeps the GT4s, and Brody Gunter and Kevin Minomi are your GT3 race winners here tonight. Have a good night, everybody. This has been a live broadcast on Turn 200. Be sure to hit subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of when we go live next. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.